Hi, my name is Takuma Taka. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto and welcome to my VVV beta graphics tutorial. In today's tutorial, I got a uh, question on how you could make this kind of like dot visuals inside VVVV and he seems like his interest was to control uh, for example a servo stepping motor uh, through Arduino or something so uh, I decided to make this tutorial if you followed my uh, previous pipe tutorial I think I'm kind of doing the similar thing uh, the one that I was explaining how to do some sort of like uh, connect visual it's basically quite similar to that one but the one that I'm doing here is more uh, two-dimensional so if I, if I move the camera everything is just flat and also I made another patch that's controlling ring, controlling the lo rotation of each uh, block so if you see it really close whenever I move my hand this box is rotating so for example if you want to control the servo motor or stepping motor uh, through VVV you just have to connect this value the rotation value to the stepping motor so that you can control it as you want of course you can map the rotation angle so right now I think it's going more than 360 or maybe not I think it is so but you can also of course map the value uh, to get the right control and I'm not going to share how to control an Arduino through VVV there is a really nice sample patch inside Girl Power IO so probably you can learn from that one I'm not really familiar with it I've tried it several times but I can't really explain it right now but anyways uh, we'll learn how to make at least a graphic so this is how the patch looks like right now so I'll bring back the render here Okay, so here we go. So this is the guy, the renderer. This is what it looks like. Zoom out. And then uh, I have different types. For example, uh, so this is my camera from top view. So it's capturing the visual uh, from uh, camera feed and then it's controlling the scale and the rotation through the value from pipette. And right now I'm adding some Gaussian blur uh, spread to get some sort of like random uh, position but basically it's a grid array so if you don't need the random position thing you can also unplug that and make everything linearly aligned and anyways uh, let's get started with this so Oh, and if you're just interested in getting this kind of effect, not because the one that I'm doing right now is based on spread, so you can use it in 3D and things like that. But if you just want the image being hatch dot, then there's a node called hatch dot DX11 texture. I think this was included inside a uh, DX11. Yeah, so it's inside DX11. Um, so this one allows you to create some sort of like this similar visual through just one hatch dot node. So if that's, if that's what you want to do. Uh, right now I think the resolution is quite high so if you right click the use default size and then set this default size to for example 100 to 100 then you can get sort of like a rough hatch dotted image so if this is what you want uh, just get it here I mean you don't have to follow my tutorial but uh, if you want to know, learn how to do this in like for example in three dimensional stuff or maybe uh, within uh, if you want the value of this kind of rotation, then this is the tutorial to follow. Okay, so let's get started. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to save this because it's quite simple. Okay, so we'll start everything from scratch. First of all, we'll need a render. Today, we wouldn't need a camera. I did add a camera, but we don't need that one. I'll add an axis and grid. Uh, so this one, there you go. So here we are. And the first thing we'll be doing is we'll need a video input. I mean, if you have, if you want to use a video, just like a video file, then use uh, the file stream. I suggest the DX11 texture VLC if you have it. You have to install VLC to make this one um, work properly. But if you're interested in using your live camera, just get the DX11 D show. And then what I have to do is I'm going to use the Microsoft Live Cam Studio, so I'm going to choose this one 
but it doesn't show anything and that's because oh wait i need a preview Oops, nothing. it doesn't show you anything and that's because uh you have to specify the format i'm not sure what this video format is but many times you should just choose the one that appears and if it doesn't if you if multiple of them appears just make sure that the other wasn't correct and just change this one okay so now i think i've got everything some frame rate is 30 resolution i guess it's 90 20 so if i enable this i can see my top view so this is how my desk looks like okay so once i've got this i'll use a node called pipette i think if you follow my previous one you already have this one uh, so we're going to be using the pipette dx11 uh, texture 2d and by the way this depth pipette is also an interesting note i'll definitely suggest you to check out the sample patch i've been playing with that okay so i did this one and then what i would need next is i'll need a grid spread uh so grid spread is included in the default as well so this makes a spread of grid so for here i'll just specify the resolution uh i'll just say it's 100 100 because this is 2D, I think it will be quite light. And then I'll also need to change the size. Size will be... Because Pipet takes the value from 2 to 2, I'll change everything to 2. And then I'll connect at this output from a grid spread to Pipet. And now we've got a 100 color out. Uh, so what I'll do next is I'll add a node called point, which generates a point. And I'll use this one point uh, dx11 2d. And then I'll connect this one to oh no, I'm not axis and grid aspect ratio. And then I'll reconnect this one to the renderer. And then I'll connect the point point to the layer in. And then I'll connect uh, this grid spread to x and y for the point. And now that it's all white out, and that's because uh they're too big the spheres are too big so if you scale this down you can see it's there's a bunch of point in the screen so we're getting really close uh, so uh, i'm gonna scale this one up it's too small okay so we've got the point we've got the grid spread we've got the pipe bit so last thing we'll be doing is i'll use this node called hsl uh, HSL is hue, saturation, lightness. So I'm going to split the color out. And I only want to get the lightness. So I'll get the lightness value. So because I want to make things black and white. So I'm going to get this one. And then uh, I want to connect this one to the scale. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's white out. And that's, <laughs> that's because the value is too high. So I'm going to map the value from here. So right now, I think the maximum amount is 1, which is white. So I want to change the destination maximum to, let's say, 0 0.01, so that the output gets smaller. As you see, comparing to this one, it got really small. So 0 0.01 is multiplied here. So then I'll connect this one to the size. There you go. So it's some, something is strange, as you see my view is split into four and this is not what i want and the reason is because i need to get x and y so i need to multiply the output size i think right now it's repeating it because the xy has in total 20,000, but here we only have 10,000. so what i have to do is i need to add a vector to the join and connect the output to the x and y both so i have these connected to the both uh, just Above. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so yeah, and then I'll connect this one to the size again. Okay, here we go. So we're kind of done already. So everything is working fine. I can see that the place where it's bright, the sphere is getting bigger. And when it's dark, I don't see any sphere. I can also change this one to 0 0.02. Okay, this looks better. So as you see, wherever the color is bright yeah so this is my skin so it's getting white and then my table tablet here is totally black 
Uh, so yeah, it's working pretty fine. Uh, if you want to control the value, let's say right now, I can also see the gray scale is also somewhere around in the middle. Uh, but if you want, for example, a use uh, map the color, we just have to connect uh, HSCB, which is the hue, saturation, contrast, brightness node. So we just have to connect this one here and I'll just make sure that it's connected to the preview and the pipette. So this one has four different values, hue, saturation, uh, contrast, and I use this quite often when I'm color correcting stuff, but uh, it's quite handy to control the output. So for example, if I lower down the contrast, I get more white, but if I higher up the contrast, then wherever it's really white, then it's always showing up. And whenever, like for example, this part of my hand is a shadow, so because I higher up, hired up the hash, uh, contrast, now it's kind of like dark, but in real it's not. You can also make a lower than the saturation oh, to make it more like obvious, but I think it's better if the saturation is on, but the contrast is high. So my keyboard is totally white. So by this, uh, we've got this visual and then uh, we've all, and this is all outputted through this X and Y value. So if we spread, for example, this one to, so left click this one, this one is the output from, uh, of the scale. Uh, I don't actually don't need this one. So for example, if I click this and uh, control I, and then get, get the info specter out, and then if I change this one to colors, rows, and I change each of them to or columns and rows to 100 and I don't need to see the value from here so I'll hide the value and instead of that I'll show a grid okay I'm just seeing the grid so by doing this we can actually yeah we're seeing the grid but we're not seeing the value so we have to change uh, oh yes slice index no we only need the just slide. Oh wait. Oh, we can show not the well. We can sh check the value, but uh, that's not what we want. We can actually yeah output this one, and then uh, this color thing from the pipe it out, and then we're gonna change this one to colors roll, and then this one to hundred, and this one to hundred. So by here we can also actually preview. Are, oh, it's actually quite heavy. Oh, I don't suggest doing this. Anyway, it's good. So uh, if you connect this value to, for example, I don't know, something for your display, I don't know, anything. If you're interested in hardware and you have something that you want this kind of visual being applied, maybe you can connect this value. What I did for the square one is I made a grid. And then added a constant and then here I added 0 0.01 uh, and 0 0.03 for, uh, for instance and then I made a rotate and then I also need a translate I used a vector for this one this one is not vector okay so translate and then I'll use a node called X, Y, Z. So I don't have a Z uh, value from the script spread, but I need to add that for this translate. So that I'll just delete the point, then I'll come back to this one. So right now we see amount of grid layouted here and I want to rotate these guys. So what I have to do is I just have to control the z-axis. So right now there's only one out. So if I right click and drag, uh, only one rotates. But if I connect this lightness to the z rotation, here it goes. So we kind of got this result that the boxes are rotating. I'll just make it uh, a little bit bigger in the x-axis. So as you see, we're getting a rotated box. So if you want to connect 
these to your servo maybe we can use this rotation value from here I think right now it's quite hard to see so I want to add a color on this constant so I'll connect the constant color to the pipe bit so now we've got a color in I think I'll turn off the contrast for now because it's better if you see the color so as you see right now we're getting a really nice colored box I'll lower down the resolution just for now and then make a box is a little bit bigger so as you see we got 30 by 30 boxes here and they're rotating among if I move my hand but right now I think the they're rotating too fast so the value is applied really quick so I'll use a node called damper and then the filter time to in default is one so I'll just put it here and then I'll reconnect the lightness to damper and then connect the damper to Z rotation so now we can sort of like get a really smooth rotation of each boxes. But I think right now they're rotating to the wrong. Yeah, so they're rotating to the left. But if you want uh, them to rotate to the right, then what we have to do is we have to map the value. So right now the destination minimum is 1, the maximum is uh, 0, but maximum is 1. So I'm going to change this one to minus 1 and then reconnect this one to the damper. So now everything, whenever I move my hand, these boxes turn to the right, and if I if it goes black, then it turns back. So, I mean, if you want this to move to the left, then you just have to change this to 1. If you want to the other side, just change this to minus 1. You should be able to change the rotation. So but by doing this, if you're familiar with Arduino, you can actually connect this to stepping motor a value maybe it's not 0 to 1 but you can map the output value using map node for instance right now if you if the if your stepping motor uh, wants you to give like 256 as a maximum they just have to change this to 256 then we can get a value in between uh, 0 to 200 256 and right now I think it's outputting this minus and that's because I set this one as a minus so if you put it back to plus one, then you shouldn't do that. So in this way, uh, you should be able to create a visual. Uh, in the same time, you can get a value to control a hardware, external hardware, which was the question that I got. And I hope this helps uh, some of you to create interesting visual and at the same time uh, controlling external hardware. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.